Mapagpalang oras po sa inyong lahat. Kami po ay lubos nagpapasalamat sa inyong pagtangkilik sa ating sering The Art of Unselfish Living. Bago po tayo magsimula ay tayo po ay manalangin. Mapagmahal naming Panginoon, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa oras na ito na kami po ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon upang makibahagi sa pagpalaganap ng inyong banal na salita. Naway kami po ay pakalmisin sa aming mga kasalanan. At naway ang banal na espiritu ay manahin, manahan sa aming puso upang lubos namin maintindihan ang inyong mga salita. Ito po aming hinihiling sa matamis na pangalan na aming Panginoon Jesus. Amen. Bago po tayo magpatuloy, ay ating po munang mapakapakinggan ang isang natatanging awitin na iahando ni Sister Erwil Jade Casildo.
Have you experienced forgiving or being forgiven? So, sa oras na ito ay ating pag-aralan kung gaano ka mapagpatawad ang ating Panginoon. By the way, ang ating pong paksa sa gibing ito ay the servant as forgiver. Ang ating pong Uh, teksto ay masusumpungan sa Psalm 103 verses 10 to 12. Ang sabi po dito ng Biblia, He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Verse 11, For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. Verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath, re hath He removed our transgression. Mga kapatid, ito po ang sinasabi ni King David. When he witnessed, when he experienced how forgiving our God is. Dito po ay marami pong mga tao sa Biblia na nagpapaliwanag kung gaano ka mapagpatawad ang ating Panginoon. And their statements really illuminates how forgiving our God has been. Una dito ay, makikita po natin sa Exodus 34 verses 6 and 7. Ang nag-illuminate o nagsasabi po dito is, it's about the experience of Moses. Ang sabi dito, And the Lord passes in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I love his unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive their iniquity their rebellion, and their sins. So, ibig sabihin dito, ano po ang sinabi dito, God, our loving God, is able to forgive us from our iniquity, rebellious behavior, and sin. So dito po mga kapatid, in-explain dito, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng, anong ibig sabihin ng iniquity? Now, 
Some Bible scholars says that iniquity is a type of sin that includes a conscious decision to hurt someone. Ibig sabihin, conscious ang isang tao, nasaktan ang isang tao. At saka, meron siyang ugaling sadyang manakit. Sinasabi dito, it comes from the Hebrew word awon. Ang meaning nito literally is crookedness, kabaloktutan, or perverseness. It is evil regarded as that which is not straight or upright or moral distortion. So ibig sabihin, kung sinasabing iniquity ay, it has, it is alluded to an immoral act or an intentional act to hurt someone. And then an Oxford Dictionary sinasabi dito, iniquity means wickedness and immorality. So magkapari lang kayo. Sobrang makasalanan at as at the same time nakakagawa or gumawa ng immorality act or immoralidad. So yun yung sinabi dito. But our loving God is able to forgive us from all our immoral acts. He will forgive us from all, all our intention to revenge or hurt someone. Yun yung sinasabi dito ni Moses. Now si Nehemiah 9 verse 17 sabi dito, You are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry, and rich in unfailing love. So in the experience of Jeremiah, he saw that God is lavish in showing His unfailing love to the sinful Israelites. Aside from showing love and failing love, He is also very gracious and slow to become angry. So, ibig sabihin, napaka mapagmahal ng ating Panginoon. And then according to the experience of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 9, the New Living Translation, sabi dito, But the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against Him. So ibig sabihin, kanina ang pinagrantan, iniquity. And now, ang sabi ni Neil, God forgives even the rebellious people. Ano may ibig sabihin ng rebellion? Rebellion means an often defiance to authority. Okay. A conspicuous or deliberately doing what the law says, thou shall not. Ibig sabihin, rebelde. In, but in the experience of Daniel, he witnessed, he experienced that God is a forgiving God even to the really rebellious people. So ito po mga, these experiences, mga kapatid, illuminates, nagpapaliwanag na ang ating Panginoon ay mapagpatawad anumang uri ng kasalanan. It might be iniquity, rebellion, or sins. So sabi dito mga kapatid na sins is that it is the direct disobedience to God's law. Ibig sabihin dito. Now, ano po ang definition ng sin? Based on the previous uh, illuminations from the Bible characters that we have just heard. In here, sinabi dito, forgiveness is a deliberate and loving act of God to release you from all guilt associated with all your sins. Sabihin, ang pagpapatawad ay ak ng Panginoon upang tayo ay mapalaya sa anumang kasalanan na nandyan sa atin. Ano po? It's, deliberate, it's releasing us from all guilt that 
we have done all guilt and sin hindi po pangilang ilan but all now ano po ang halaga what is the cost of god's forgiveness in matthew 26:28 ang sabi dito this is my blood which confirms the covenant between god and his people it is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. So ano ang cost ng forgiveness, mga kapatid? The cost is the precious blood of Christ. Poured out to forgive the sins of many. So ano pa mga kapatid? Sa Hebrew 9.22, sabi dito sa Biblia, For without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The New Living Transition says, ano? For without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So kung wala yung precious na dugo ng ating Panginoong Isos, wala pong kapatawaran. In other words, kung ating Panginoong Isos ay hindi namatay, hindi pinako sa cross, lahat tayo ngayon ay walang kapatawaran sa ating mga kasalanan. It's because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is very much willing to pay the price for your sin, for my sin, and all of our sin so that all of us, everyone, will experience forgiveness and freedom from guilt. So, ngayon mga kapatid, paano natin matanggap ang kapatawaran galing sa Painoon? Now, um, dito po sa Luke chapter 7, verses 48 to 50, ang sabi po dito, then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sin? Sino ba ito? Bakit sinasabing magpatawad ng kasalanan? And Jesus said to the woman, just the Mary Magdalene, sabi niya, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So ano pong unang, ano, paano tayo magkapag, magkaroon ng kapatawaran sa ating mga kasalanan? According to the experience is that of Mary, God told him to have faith. So ano pong mga kapatid? Kailangan nating tanggapin ang kapatawaran galing sa Panginoon. Mga kapatid, ang sunod pong paraan upang tayo makatanggap ng kapatawaran sa ating Panginoon is confess our sins. Kailangan po nating ikumpisa sa sabihin sa Panginoon kung ano ang ating mga kasalanan. Meron pa akong isang illustration. Try to imagine that sin is like a heavy load one is carrying, or isang napaka-bigat na load na dinadala mo. Sa katatanungin sa iyong Panginoon, ano yung daladala mong kasalanan? So, confessing is, is closing. Telling God na, Panginoon, ito ang aking mga kasalanan, isa. Sasabihin mo sa kanya, bawat isa. Because, ang sabi dito sa 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all our righteousness. So, ibig sabihin mga kapatid, ang kailangan lang natin ay i-confess. Sasabihin natin sa Panginoon kung ano ang ating mga kasalanan. Isa-isa, wala pong matago. Wala po tayong itatago. Bawat isa sasabihin. And then when we confess our sins to God, 
He is faithful to forgive our sins and to purify us from all, all our unrighteousness. So yan. Ang pangatlo po na paraan upang tayo ay makatanggap ng kapatawaran sa ating Panginoon ay sinasabing repent. Okay. Tagalog ay magsisi. Ang sabi po dito sa Acts 3.19, Repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Acts 3.19. Ibig sabihin, repent. Pagsisisihan natin ang ating mga kasalanan. Now, sa New Testament, the key term for repentance is metanoia. So, ang ibig sabihin ng metanoia ay it has two usual sense. First is that a change of mind. Okay. Mababago ang direction ng isip at saka at the same time regret or remorse or pagsisisi. So, ano ang ibig sabihin ng repentance? Change your mind and then regret. Okay. Kung inisip mo mga kapatid ay gawin yung nakasaya, nakasanayang makasalanang gawain, palitan mo ang iyong iniisip at saka magsisisi ka. Now, sabi dito, eh, sabi dito, true repentance lead to person to say. So, kung ang isang tao ay nagsisisi sa kanyang mga kasalanan, madalas niya itong sabihin. I have seen and prove it 180 degree change of direction. So kung, kung ikaw ay nagsisisabi mo, Panginoon, ako ay makasalanan. Patawarin mo ako. And then you make a 180 degrees turn from your sinful direction. So isipin mo, ano ang direction ko? Ano ang parang desire ko? Alam kong kasalanan ito. So, with that, I have to change into 180 degrees direction. So, ibig sabihin, totally natalikuran nyo ang inyong kasalanan. Sa akin, totally. Ano mga kasalanan ko? Talik, tatalikuran ko yun. 180 degrees. And then, sinasabi dito, what repentance is not. Repentance is not asking the Lord to forgiveness with intent, intention to with the intention rather to sin again. So ibig hindi ibig sabi na nagrepent ako sa sabihin ko sa Panginoon. Anyway, mapatawad naman ako. Hindi. Kung hindi, it is a change of mind, and then it's really asking forgiveness without the intention na eh, anyway, mapatawad naman ako. Okay lang magkasalanan. Hindi po ganon. Sa nasabi dito, Repentance is an honest, regretful acknowledgement of sin with the commitment to change. Ibig sabihin kung nagrepent ang isang tao, sinasabi niya sa sarili na, ay, hindi ko na ito gawin. So ano ang mga kasalanan natin na, ano, if we have that revengeful spirit, sabihin natin, ay, hindi na ako mag-take revenge. Kung tayo po ay um, meron tayong ugali na nagtitingin ng mga mali sa iba. Tapos yung mali ng iba ay sasabihin natin sa iba. In other words, in our context is Christmas. Sasabihin ko sa sarili ko, Lord, ganito ako. Magbago na ako. Tulungan mo akong magbago. Hindi na ako babalik sa pagkatsismosa. And then repentance leads us to cultivate godliness while eradicating ha habits that lead into sin. Learn more about the true meaning of repentance in the in what the scripture say. So I mean, sabi, mapag-aralan natin kung ano ang repentance sa pamagitan ng pag-aaral natin ng mga banal na salita ng Diyos. So Next is number three. Paano natin maano ang, for, ang forgiveness? It's just simply to forgive. Luke 6, 30, 6.37 says, Forgive and 
you will be forgiven. So, ano ibig sabihin? Forgive and you will be forgiven. So, mga kapatid, um, sinasabi natin sa sarili ko, Lord, patawarin mo ako. Pero, sa ating sarili ay, hindi naman tayo nagpapatawad. Mali pa yun. Kasi, ang tunay na pagtanggap ng kapatawaran mula sa ating Panginoon ay, tayo din po ay magpapatawad. As servant of God, claiming to be God's followers, ano po ang ating gagawin as an application to what we have learned about our God who is a forgiving God and about how to receive forgiveness. Ano po ang ating gagawin? In the direction of our topic, which is God's servant as forgiver. Ano ang ating gagawin? Upang ang pagpatawad ang pagpapatawad sa atin ng Panginoon ay atin ding mapa-experience sa iba. Una dito ay, first is that we have to forgive others the way our God, the way Jesus Christ forgive us. So, makikita dito natin sa, ang sabi ng Biblia, Dito sa Romans 6.16, ang sabi dito, Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient servant, you are servant of the one you obey. So mga kapatid, ati pong palaging kiniklaim na tayo pa ay followers of the living God. So in other words, kung tayo ay followers of the living God, this text is alluded to the fact that we follow God and we become His servant. And as His servant, how do we forgive? Sabi dito, let us forgive the way others are the way, let us forgive others rather the way God Forgive us. So, sabi dito. And first, paano tayo mag-forgive? Forgive others unconditionally. Colossians 3.13 says, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you. So, you must forgive. So, anong sabi dito mga kapatid? Kailangan magpatawad tayo sa iba the way Christ forgave us. So, ito na lang ang practical application. Saan mong kayo ngayon? Sa inyong pamilya? Sa inyong workplace? Or sa inyong community? Nandyan kayo ngayon ang servant of God. Tingnan niyo po na ang bawat isa, sasabihin man natin, I am, they are 70 Adventists, they are Christians, they, they study the Bible, and they gave Bible study, yet, those persons are still imperfect. Ang kasama ninyo sa pamilya, although sabihin natin, mananampalatay sa Painon, they are still imperfect. Your leaders, sabihin natin, they should be the paradigm of forgiveness or perfection, mga kapatid, hindi po pa nangyari. Ang ati pong mga kasama sa panampalataya, mga kapatiran, mga leaders, sinasabi ko, kasama natin sa trabaho or ano man, they are still imperfect. That's why the Bible is very clear that make allowance for each other's fault. Hindi niyo po sila mabago. May mga fault din sila. And if ever 
yung ugali nila ay nakaka-offend sa'yo. Or if ever sinasadya or hindi sinasadya, the Bible admonishes us to forgive them and make allowance for their imperfection. So number two, application is that seek reconciliation. Hangarin po sana natin na manumbalik ang nakagawian ng re relasyon. Ang sabi dito, And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. So mga kapatid, kung ang isang tao, ang isang kaibigan mo, isang kasama mo ay na-offend ka or nagkasala sa'yo, the moment nagkasala sa'yo, a servant of God, ano bang ating pakikitungo? Meron bang distansya? Meron bang wall that separate between you and your friend? Or we have this capability and the heart to retain, to maintain the good relationship that you have prior to the act of sinning against you with that friend of yours or family members. And number three is that, ano unang gawin? Forgive, seek reconciliation, and last is that. Galatians 6.1, sabi dito, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in, in fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So sabi dito, we are servant of God, we are follower of God. Tayo po sana ang merong hangarin na mapanumbalik. Restore the sinner to the original state. So, um, nagtatanong po ako, ano po ang inyong gawin kung meron kayong nakita can speak to us, can speak to us, or openly sinning individual? Kaya tayo po ba ay kasama na sisiraan sila? Na lalo na sa ating mga, sa mga nanonood ngayon na nag-handle ng mga tauhan. If you are a leader, there is one illustration in the experience of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 19 verses 4 to 7. Ang sabi dito, So Jehoshaphat dwelt in Jer at Jerusalem. He went again among the people from Beersheba to the mountains of Ephraim and brought them back to the Lord God of their fathers. So, anong ginawa? Si Jehoshaphat, nung nakita nila ang kanyang mga, ang mga tao ng Panginoon ay nagkasala. The Israelites sin against God. Pero as a leader, anong na? He brought them back to the Lord, the God of their fathers. He restored the relationship. He tried to restore the original state of the Israelites. Once they were believers, but they apostatized. But at this time, when Jehoshaphat became the leader, he restored their relationship to their God. Sabi dito, Now therefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take care and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord God. No partiality, nor no taking of bribes. So, mga kapatid, as servants of the living God, claiming to be His followers, with the help of our Almighty God, let us be the catalyst of doing act of forgiveness to the brethren to subordinates, to family members who sin against us. Now ay sa tulong ng banal na Espiritu, Espiritu Santo, ay tayo'y mamumuhay na mapagpatawad. Tayo'y namumuhay na kung merong nagkasala against sa atin, ay hindi lang natin sila pinatawad, kung hindi 
ating ipanumbalik, i-maintain ang ating magandang relasyon sa kanila. Na hindi ay nagkasala na, meron ng parang pagkakaiba. And brothers and sisters, we cannot do it alone because of our sinful state. But the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. As we await the Lord's second coming, may we always live a godly life willing to receive forgiveness from God and at the same time forgive others. Tayo po ay manalangin. Almighty Father in heaven, we would like to thank Thee for reminding us our loving, our, our loving, how forgiving our God is. Thou art our God who is willing to sacrifice, to give your life in order for us to be free from guilt. Almighty Father, please forgive us and please use the message at this moment to cleanse us, to teach us, so that we will be able to apply it daily in our daily living, in our daily associations with our workmates, friends, and family members. Thank you for hearing and granting all requests. In the loving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig at kayo po ay aming inanyahan na manood muli sa mga sumusunod na ser- serye. At naway, inyo din po itong i-share upang ang iba din po ay pagpalain dahil sa mga mensaheng ating mapapanood sa bawat serye. May God bless us all.